Hello everybody, this is Nate from Team Chaos and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at some of the improvements we've made to Corona decals in Corona 10. With these improvements, decals can be even easier and more fun to use. And so how about we take a look at a couple of quick examples of some of the things you can do with all these new improvements. For starters, you can now very easily define how the displacement of the decal itself affects the base material, which is really useful because in this particular example, as you can see, we can very easily go from these light boot prints that have pressed the ground downwards but have retained the displaced imperfections of the ground. You can go from that to boot prints that have left such an indent that basically all the ground got trampled and the displacement is now entirely being driven by the displacement in the boot print material itself. So the material that's applied to the decal. As another example of just how handy the new improvements can be, we have this business card render. Right now, the decal is affecting the color, reflection, and all those basic material properties of our card here. Now, what it is not affecting, however, is the bump in the displacement but we can just as easily make it only do the bump and the displacement without affecting the color and all those other properties at all. In this way, uh, we go from your typical printed business card to an embossed business card. Pretty nifty, eh? But hold up, here's another example, and this time the focus is this decal that's creating this ventilation shaft cover on the wall. Right now, the thing has its own material, but if we don't want this decal to affect the colors, or the reflections, or really any of the other material channels, well, then it looks like this ventilation shaft got painted over with wall paint. And if you take a closer look, you'll also be able to see that we set our bump to be a mixture of the decals bump and the wall materials bump. So this way, we get all those nice details from that wall paint materials bump and the decal materials bump. And the displacement from the decal material is still there, as you can see, because that's what's making the shaft protrude outwards. So these new improvements can really make your decal workflow quite a bit more intuitive. Right, so how about we jump into 3ds Max and we start demoing some of this new functionality. So the first thing we'll be taking a look at here are going to be these uh, new effect base toggles. Okay, so with these things, you're basically controlling how the decal affects the base material that it is projected on. Okay, so if we just, for example, untoggle all of these toggles right here, say for the bump and the displacement toggles, well, now you can see that our boot prints are still affecting the base object by displacing it and adding bump to it, but they don't affect its material anymore. Our boot prints are now the same material as the ground is. And the mapping, as you can see, stays consistent to that of the base material. But now the extra power obviously comes from the ability you now have to control which material channels get affected by the decal. So if you want the decal to only affect the color and the roughness of that base material, along with the bump and displacement, for example, well then you just toggle those toggles to on and this way, you can create some really interesting effects really easily. So just as an example, here you can see we've got these boot prints in the ground. But if we play around with the effect base toggles a bit, well, we can quite easily get these boot prints to be wet looking. And so this really allows for a lot of customizability. But now, this isn't the only improvement we've made to the Corona decals, okay? Because what you can now also do is you can define how that bump and that displacement on that decal combines with the bump and the displacement on that base material. And this really allows you to create some really interesting things really easily. And so the next thing that we're going to be taking a look at here is the different ways that you can combine your decals displacement with your base materials displacement. If you think about it, there's basically three options to choose from. First would be to just simply untoggle the displacement toggle. And in this case, the decals displacement won't affect anything. And you'll only have that base materials displacement doing its thing. In our case, that's the ground materials displacement. Now, this can be super useful, for example, uh, for whenever you're trying to create dirt imperfections on, say, wooden floors. Because, you know, you, you probably wouldn't want to have that dirty boot print be sticking out the wooden floor there, right? Right. 
Now, if you enable the displacement toggle and you also have the add to base option checked on, well, then you're having that base displacement turned on, but you're also adding the decals displacement on top of it. OK, so it's a mixture of the two. Thirdly, if you just disable the add to base option here, uh, well, then the base materials displacement won't be there. And the only displacement in effect will be the one from the decal itself. Now, in our case here, because the ground is displaced quite heavily, and because of it, the entire ground object is sort of pushed upwards uh, quite a bit on that vertical axis. Well, uh, in this case, we'll need to adjust the displacement settings of our boot prints to match the ground a bit better. And so what we'll do here is we'll maintain the difference ratio between the min and the max level. And we'll just go with values that will move the entire displaced surface higher up on that vertical axis. So for us, that'll be 0.97 centimeters for the min level and 1.17 centimeters for the max level. Now, in case you're confused a bit, we just basically kept the displacement ratio the same. We just moved the entire displaced surface upwards. And there you go. We now only have that decals displacement doing its thing. So this functionality can really help you achieve different effects rather easily because as you can see on the left here, we only have a literal boot print on the ground. In the middle, we have our boot print pushing the ground downwards, right? And on the right, we have the boot print pushing the ground downwards too, but we still have that ground's displaced imperfections in there as well. So those little pebbles are still pebbles. They just got pushed in with the boot print, right? So everything just got pushed downwards a little bit, but those pebbles are still there. Now, as far as combining the decals bump effect, and the base materials bump effect goes, well, the same philosophy applies. So on the left, we only have that base surface bump doing its thing, and that's the bump unchecked mode. In the middle, we only see the decals bump effect due to only having the bump toggle toggle to on without the add to base option. And on the right, we're adding the decals bump on top of the base materials bump with the add to base option. So exactly the same behavior as is there with the displacement. Now, before we conclude this tutorial, there's still one more topic that we'd like to talk to you about, and that is how the opacity works with all this new decal functionality. By and large, our recommended workflow is to cut out your decals straight from the decal object itself. So you go with the map option and you just plug your mask in here. If you now want to control the opacity of the material, just make sure that the effect base opacity here is toggled to on and then go into your material and play around with the opacity value in there. Okay. Also, if you aren't using a mask and instead you just want to use a single color, well then the same workflow applies. Now, what we don't really recommend doing is controlling the opacity of the decal through the material. In this case, you'd have the from material mask source toggle to on, and then you would have your mask uh, plugged into the opacity slot of your material. So this is not really recommended because opacity in the material now acts both as a mask for the decal and as a blending strength of all of the parameters in your material, including opacity itself. And so it just gives sort of unexpected results and it will make your head hurt trying to understand it. Now, we did want to give you the option to use this workflow but we really don't quite recommend it unless you know exactly what you want to do. Right, and so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, we'd like to thank you for tuning in and we do hope you're inspired to go ahead and start playing with uh, these new improvements that we've made to the Corona decal, okay? And if you come up with some interesting results that you would like to share with us and with the broader Corona community, well then feel free to hop over on our forums and hit the gallery section and just share your creations over there. Now again, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.